Hey everyone, welcome back to the next video in making your life a little easier using cabinet vision. My name is Rob. Uh, the last video I left off, we were kind of editing cabinets, and uh, so in this video we're going to go a little bit deeper into the cab uh, cabinet editing process, and uh, we're going to specifically talk about the cam editor. Um, uh, so, be a short video, um, but let's take a look at what we got. So we're back in uh, the main room that we created, and so I'm going to double click this cabinet, and so we're in the main cabinet uh, editing uh, page. And so to get to the cam editor, there's a couple ways to get there. You've got your views right here, you got your face, plan, and then the end. If I were to right click out here it's going to give me a wheel with all the parts available for me to select in this case it's the left and the right cabinet ends and so I can select one and it's going to give me a, a drop down wheel or a wheel with some options uh, but what we're going to take a look at is this edit uh, the selected object so the pencil if we click this it takes us to the cam editor um, so the, the first thing that I want to point out is that we have a, a tab over here called work plane and what work plane is it's it's the which plane do you want to apply the operations to um, you've got your front plane you've got your back plane and I think you can see over here I think what you have selected is in green I believe so if I go to the back, I'm now selecting the back. So I believe the red is the side that uh, we're not that's not selected, and green is selected. Um, if we take a look, I'm going to jump out of here a second so I can kind of illustrate this point. I'm going to add a shelf to this cabinet. So we're going to go to the interior of this cabinet. I'm going to click in the middle to highlight this blue area, and I'm going to create a horizontal split. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to add some shelf holes so to kind of better uh, illustrate the uh, work plane. Um, so let's go back to our left end and we're going to edit. And the reason that this is important, if you add an operation to the wrong plane, it's going to have a hard time optimizing with all the other parts that are going to be face up, if that makes any sense. So we can take a look at here if I... I have my front and back and so what we can do like if I go to 3D this is a left end so I know that I've got uh, some drill holes on the inside so if we go back to the cam editor I know that it's being applied to the back side because you can see here that there's a back rabbit here and then if I twisted this to the left it would be um, Correct, and that's important because if I wanted to add, let's say, a dado over here, I need to make sure I'm adding it to the right sides, the side, because I need it to process on this side. So I know I kind of long way to explain the work plane, but it is it is pretty important. So that being said, let's move on. We've got some stuff up here. Uh, uh, some yellow and red options and these are primarily going to be what you're going to use if you're going to put in custom operations. The first three are probably going to be the most used. The Clamex and the Fastlink and the IntelliJoint, I really don't know much about that. Um, the Clamex, it's a Lamello product and here's what this looks like. So it looks like it goes in the end of the cabinet um, same company that makes the Cabineo system, so I think it's just a different different uh, method there. And then the fast link is probably something similar. Uh, but uh, let's continue on with, since I've already drug a dado in, we're going to look at that first. So I, I drug a dado in, and it, I put a red line, and I kind of just drug it to where I want it. If I click this over here, I've got some options to edit it. My X and Y is pretty obvious. Think of X as left and right and Y is up and down. If I go, let's say I wanted it at 8 inches on the Y, it's going to move that up. So you can, you can get it drug in there 
<clears throat> and if it's not in the right place, then you can use this panel on the left side to, to get it to where you want it to go. <clears throat> the width, pretty self-explanatory. Um, that's going to increase uh, the, the spacing if you're trying to do um, some experimenting and maybe you're using three-quarter inch material you can change that to whatever uh, size you need the depth uh, the length is pretty obvious it's going to be the length of that uh, the depth that's going to be how far do you want that operation to go in this case we only want it to go a quarter of an inch let's say we're using half inch material and we just want to put a floor in it um, angle that's going to affect the angle of this primary I just always leave that at no um, I really don't know what that does when you change it to yes but I've never I've had any I've never messed with it never had any problems so I just always leave it at no all right this tool tool is pretty important so this is where the cabinet vision is going to say okay well what tool do you want me to do this with Currently it's set at auto select, which means if I click this uh, three arrows here, it, this is going to bring up all the tools that you have in your CNC library. Uh, this is a fresh install, so I have nothing. This is what Cabinet Vision imports in. Um, so yours will look different based on which tools you have. But what that auto select is, is basically saying, it's saying Cabinet Vision, I want you to determine what is the best tool that I have available in my library that's capable of running that operation. It's pretty handy if you have, let's say, like for me, a real world example is using the Cabaneo system. I didn't have the specific tools set up when I first got going and so I was still able with the auto select to still run it. It would just pull a tool, um, it would pull the most appropriate tool to to run that operation so it still allowed me to uh, process the parts um, so that's what the auto select is however if you do have a specific tool in mind you can go in and you can assign that tool to it Let's say I want the half inch end mill to do the half inch dado so we can take a look at the hole so the hole is pretty self-explanatory let's just say let's back out of this um, and we're going to go to the face view and we're going to right click and we're going to select the back. This is a better example. So let's say on my back, um, we're going to select the back of the back, so the back side work plane. Let's say I wanted to add a hole to cut out for plumbing. Uh, pipe is coming through. And let's say I select this hole. Let's just kind of just pick an arbitrary spot. I'm going to hit escape. And I'm going to select this hole, and now I have some properties. Um, the position X, Y, it's the same as, as earlier. It's going, to, um, it's going off the center point, and, and wherever, uh, left to right, top to bottom. So that's how we can move it around. Let's say the center of the hole is 15 inches, or I don't... Yeah, I think it's, yeah, we're in inches. Okay, so 15, and then let's just keep it at 16 on the Y. Let's say the diameter is four inches. Um, and then the depth on this one, uh, because I have nothing set up in Cabinet Vision, it's defaulting it as a quarter inch back. So I only need to go a quarter inch to, uh, to cut through this all the way. We're gonna leave it at auto select. Um, and here you can change this to whatever you want. Plumbing hole, main plumbing hole. If there's gonna be multiple holes, you can name those. Uh, if I go to 3D, um, and if you're if you're in wire mode by default, you can go up to render mode and you want to hit fill, and that'll fill it in, make it a little easier to see. We can see that we have gone all the way through uh, the the back, which is what we want. So we know that's working. Um, you've also got line bore let's say we want for some reason to add holes to the back um, you've got this line bore feature and right over here you've got your spacing uh, basically it's doing the same thing as our main hole except this time it's 
uh, it's it's treating it as a uh, drill head operation. So it's 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 going to keep all the circles together in a line until you and you tell them how far do you want them apart, how big do you want them in diameter. Let's say uh, for standard shelf holes, it should be about three uh, three sixteenths. So and then let's say we're cutting in. Um, We'll just assume that this was a half inch thick part. Um, the depth, um, well on this, let's say we're at a quarter inch. So let's say we don't want to go all the way through for some reason. So we're just going to go an eighth inch deep. So we're going to go halfway through the material. And then the spacing, inch and a quarter, which I believe it's 32 or 35 millimeters. And that's correct, or that's pretty much industry standard for uh, shelf hole center to center. Um, this is your number of repeats so we could add some. Let's say we want 20. It's going to grow it uh, by 3. Um, I leave it the same on auto select. For me it's going to trigger my drill head. Um, if you're on a smaller CNC and you don't have a drill head then you know it's going to... So this is where you'd probably want to have a, um, a 5 millimeter drill bit in a tool and then um, I think if you have that in it should auto select that it should know to auto select that or you could go in and and pick that tool yourself but if we go to the 3D view we can see we've got 3 16th diameter holes going only an eighth inch into our back because we're gonna add shelves in there for some weird reason uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory there. Um, we delete this. You've also got some custom shapes that you can make. Like if you had uh, something specific, you know, I don't know, like a triangle. Let's say we want to make a triangle. Um, it works the same way as as that dado. It's just it's just a kind of a more of a free sketch. Uh, it gives you the ability to free free draw, um, so to speak. Like if you had something very specific a shape that you wanted to cut out. Um, so all those lines are. So these are kind of like assumed operations, and 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 these kind of give you the freedom to to uh, do some custom stuff. Um, you've got your your tools. If any of you guys have used like anything like VCarve or even like Illustrator, it doesn't have to be cabinet. You can make designs, you can intersect lines and shapes, and then you can go in and delete those shapes, you know, to create um, to create the actual outline that you want. Stuff you can go in there and experiment. You got your measuring tool right here if you if you need to check distances. Um, overall, it's a pretty easy it's a pretty easy um, part of the program to learn, in my opinion. It's you know the most intimidating is just knowing how to get there and then just going in and messing with it. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is whenever you are doing uh, cam operations to a part, it's only going to do it to that part. Like it won't distribute it anywhere else in the job or in future jobs unless uh, you save that cabinet, I guess, into the library. Uh, but it is part specific. Um, so... I want to keep this video short, so this is kind of the 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 cam editor. Um, hopefully, uh, this you know helped help you guys uh, increase uh, your understanding of of cabinet vision. And we will end this one here. But thanks for watching, and we will see you again in the next video.